Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. All right, let's bring in Tyler Dunn, founder of Go Long, the newsletter, a great source for all things Green Bay, all things NFC North, and a lot of NFL sources. So um, let, let's start with this. Um, that hub arkish Aaron Rodgers situation, um, what's funny about it, Tom Brady would not have reacted to it. Russell Wilson would not have reacted to it. Um, I don't think Patrick Mahomes would have reacted to it. I don't think Justin Herbert would have reacted to it or Lamar Jackson. Aaron not only reacted to it, he was hyper-aggressive. And it, it's it, how did that land for you that he went right? I mean, I don't care. I thought it was funny. It's just it's football theater to me. But how did that land? I mean, I'm sure all Packer fans supported him. But for you, how did it land? Right. I, I think that we all we, we all heard the comment and it's it, 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 it kind of catches your attention when you hear somebody who's voting for MVP use that for reason. But you're right. I think a lot of quarterbacks, I think Tom Brady maybe says between five to eight words and has no reaction to something like that. Right. But that's what makes Aaron Rodgers different. He cares about this stuff. He cares about what people think about him, what they say about him. His antenna is up 24 seven. Yeah. Um, people are telling him what's being said, what's, what's being written. And, and he's going to react. He, he is really in effort mode. Um, and he, he said it himself. He's going to react to these things. And, uh, I think that the MVP award, Colin, means a great, great deal to Aaron Rodgers th this season, especially, you know, to the narrative of his career. Um, I think very much like um, kind of like Kobe Bryant was was so consumed with, you know, the narrative of his career and kind of scripting a movie. Kent Babb wrote a great story, I believe, at the Washington Post a few years back on this. Some athletes, they, they, they care deeply about that story arc and, and how they'll be remembered I think this MVP award more than any other, more than maybe anything means a ton to Aaron Rodgers. So yeah, when he hears that, he knows other voters might think that way and he's going to go nuclear. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting. I, I said this the other day, I said, when I take the last two years of Aaron, which he's looked so good and so effortless, very Marino like, it's just easy. I said, Eli Manning needed two Super Bowls especially over Belichick and Brady, to become a, a Hall of Famer. Uh, Big Ben, um, I don't think he's better than Aaron Rodgers if he had three. Um, I don't feel like this Super Bowl for Aaron, I really don't. He's a top 10 quarterback ever. He's maybe a top five talent. There's an Elway. If Elway would have won one Super Bowl and that's it, I'm good. It's still one of the most remark. Marino never won any. And I've really come to terms with Aaron that I always liked him more than Favre. I thought he was a smarter version of, of, of what Green Bay's quarterbacks had been, Brett Favre. But I, I really looked today and, you know, Aaron said after that first Super Bowl, he said, this is it. I, I thought it would feel bigger. And would it be crushing to him if he didn't win it? Because I think he knows now. I think Aaron knows. Listen, I'm a top 10 guy ever. I'm going to beat the records, the regular season stuff. I mean, what, do you, what if Aaron loses in the second round? Is it a crushing thing? Does it influence where he plays next year, in your opinion? Boy, it was really interesting last year. when I mean, immediately when they lost to Tampa Bay, what happened, Colin? It was he threw his future into the darkness instantly. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. It's, and it, he kind of changed that narrative. It wasn't one and four in the NFC championship game. It was how could Green Bay do this to Aaron Rodgers? How could they put him in this mental space where he might not want to be there this year? I remember Matt LaFleur was asked about, he's like, dang right. I want him on this team. I want him to be the quarterback. I, I don't really know where that's coming from. So I, to answer your question, I think if they were to lose in the NFC championship game again, we might get something like that, right? Where I don't know what he really thinks. I don't know what he really feels. I'd be completely speculating, but I do think that if they do lose, it's going to be instantly um, meticulously. It's kind of somebody else's fault. You know, at this point last year, he was doing a big story with one of his allies out there that, you know, he's not a victim. He's not a victim, right? He's in this, men this amazing mental place where he just learned to let go. 
And then they lost that game to Tampa Bay. And then what did he do for six months? He played the victim and he, he drew the Packers, dragged the Packers through the mud and wanted his GM fired. Didn't exactly shoot down that report. So we have to believe that. I, I don't know. <laughs> it could go either way, right? They win it all. He's a hero. They're building statues. They're naming streets after him. And Packer fans love him forever. If they lose, it could go that direction again. I think it's resolved sooner. I think he's right there. It will be resolved sooner. But I do think it will probably be somebody else's fault, not his. And that being said, I think they go to the Super Bowl and maybe win it. I, I don't know who really scares you in the NFC right now if you're Green Bay. Yeah, what worries Other me Other than Tampa, about... again, <laughs> I should say, right? Yeah, well, I mean, today, you know, again, they stacked up touchdown passes. Um, what worries me about Green Bay, and I've said this for several years, they're pretty. Like, if you tell me Aaron's going to be great, they're pretty. They're not great coming from behind, uh, but they're pretty. They'll win their division going away. My interpretation of that is, yeah, that's what I've seen for the last 10 years mostly. Early in the year, I thought there was a physicality that really impressed me. And then I watched them play Cleveland and Chicago, and I'm like, they're not putting these teams away, and these teams are running the ball on them. And I thought to myself, oh, they're getting pretty again. And they are. They're the best watch. Kansas City and Green Bay are just, it's fun. You know, Buffalo's got that component. Knockouts, big plays. Um, do you, are you concerned at all? that teams like the Niners or the Eagles or if Leonard Fournette comes back or Sony Michelle and Cam Akers, that you can run and take Aaron out of this game. Because if you look at the yards per carry allowed, Tyler, it's bad. It's like 28th or below. It's a great point. We forget about Fournette. He was playing so well right before that, before that injury, that Colts game, it looked like the Buccaneers – we're going to run through him 30 to 40 touches the game if they wanted to. I think it should concern Green Bay to an extent. I, th I think that, yeah, you don't want your MVP quarterback on the sideline just neutralized over there while a team's running and running and running. But I think Green Bay can kind of play that game too. I think that's what maybe makes Green Bay dangerous is, you know, they can play the shootout style if that's what it turns into. But they can, they can play that grimy game. They can win that 23 to 13 game if they have to. They can unleash AJ Dillon and all 250 pounds of muscle on you and, and Aaron Jones and run the ball. I mean, their line's been, been beat up all season. Now they're getting David Bakhtiari back. I, I feel like this Packers team, unlike past Packer teams can a run the ball, you know, with a, with a mashing back and bad conditions. You know, the one year that Eddie Lacy was in shape and was doing that, they had the crazy NFC championship loss to Seattle so other than that, they, they haven't had a back. They had, have had a rushing offense like this with Aaron Rodgers. And defensively, they're opportunistic. And it's, it, it's always tricky to play that way, you know, to rely on turnovers. But, man, Rasul Douglas, it's always somebody, Devondre Campbell, um, Rashawn Gary, somebody new every week making a big, big play. It, there, there, there's, there's a gnarly component to this defense they just haven't seen there come January. So I, I feel like they can win that type of game that you're describing still for the people who cover Aaron. Um, because I, my guess would be, you know, fans will always have Aaron's back, especially when he's winning. But for the people who cover Aaron, yourself included, if you took a vote anonymously, will he be a Packer or not? What is the vibe today? I, I think that man, I think right now people would, the educated guess would be he, he, he's back in Green Bay. I think you would take him at his word that he's had these productive conversations with, with Brian Gutekunst and Matt LaFleur, and he loves Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, they're really, really close. I, I would think that if it's about football, then you obviously stay right with the team that's around him. You know, I don't know where you're going to go. That's better than this. And the autonomy at the line of scrimmage to do whatever the hell you want. He's he can do whatever he wants in green Bay. Right. You're not going to get that elsewhere. So I think if you add that all up, you lean toward that, but this is somebody who changes his mind. You know, I, who knows whatever Aaron Rodgers is thinking right now, um, he, he could change his mind with a win or a loss in the playoffs. Um, he easily could do that. I mean, I think it's for real that up to the 11th hour, 
he was seriously considering retirement into this season. I mean, when he said that at the press conference, I, I don't think it was bluster. I mean, everything I was hearing, everything everybody was hearing, this was real. Like he, he was okay stepping away. That could be a possibility. Maybe, maybe he retires. So I still think Colin, it could go in a million different directions and it's, it's, it's up, it's up to him, but it's also for the team. And I think there's also a lot of money ramifications. You, how in the hell are you going to keep Aaron Rodgers and Devonte Adams? You know, if you're if you're going to pay Aaron Rodgers what he's worth, pay Devonte Adams what he what he's worth. I don't know if you can. The, 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 those are cap gymnastics that I don't know if anybody could pull off. Some thoughts on the division. Mike Zimmer is fired. Agree with it, and who do you think or hear they'll go after? Haven't heard anything on on who they'd go after, but this is something the Vikings have, have had, had 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 to do for a long time, right? I mean, this is a team that's just kind of stuck in eight win, nine win, even 10 win purgatory where, man, okay, you're, you're competing, you're making the playoffs, you're building a new stadium, you're filling up that stadium, you're selling hope. But I've always felt like until they're willing to take those five steps back, they, they can't step forward. I mean, you, they could have moved on from Kirk Cousins. They could have gotten out of that and taken their L into 2020 and, and just said, all right, you know what, let's, let's move on but they doubled down, they tripled down, they they did their own cap gymnastics to try to make a contender that COVID year. They dragged it into 2021, and I don't know. I think you got to blow the whole thing up, and you need a coach, I guess, who can beat Green Bay. I mean, you need – that. that's the team that's still in your way. I think you still have to operate like Aaron Rodgers is going to be there for a while, and they're right back to where they really have always been since 08, 09. Matt Nagy out. Um I don't think either one of us is surprised. You go into a season with a veteran like Andy Dalton and Justin Fields, uh, it's rough. That's why Kyle Shanahan just stuck with a veteran. Um, And that's, there's an argument to be made that, you know, that's a safer route. Um, And now, you know, Fields struggled. Andy was better at the end of the year, but not, not in the middle of the year. Do you agree with the move? and gut feeling on which direction they go. I, I I have questions about them. I like some of their offensive pieces, but the defense is old. They have too much money in the front seven. It feels like, to me, it's closer to a, a rebuild than they want to acknowledge. I, I agree. You can talk yourself into their drafts. You know, Ryan Pace, you can you can kind of talk yourself into this third or fourth round or that third. What, you know what? Go back to Kevin White all the way through. I mean, you've got some pretty epic – mistakes epic bus and that stuff adds up i mean i I think that they're you know more they're they're further away than they'd like to believe as well and it's just uh it's a matter of quarterback it's gonna be we thought this past offseason was nuts this offseason is going to be ridiculous like what (laughs) there's so many teams that are quarterback hunting and so many quarterbacks regardless of what they say publicly hello russell wilson are probably gonna want out the bears thought they had russell wilson everything i was told they thought that was a done deal. They were going to get Russell Wilson. And at the 11th hour, it didn't happen. And, you know, they were willing to basically give Seattle anything other than Khalil Mack. And I think John Schneider was all in. I think Schneider was ready to move on. That maybe he was even a little tired of, of Russell Wilson. Okay, let's turn the page. Pete Carroll did not want to. Pete Carroll's oldest coach in the league. He wanted to win now. And so they get him an offensive coordinator that and, and try to get him to buy into that offensive coordinator and a new way of doing things and away from the ground and pound and running the ball all over the place. And Russell Wilson was kind of talked off the ledge from what I was heard or heard from his, uh, his quarterbacks coach, Jay keep keeps. He, he talked to him. He got him to buy in and they won what seven games this year. I, I know he's going to say nice things about Seattle. I know Seattle was going to say nice things about him. It's best for Seattle to move on and it's best for Russell Wilson to move on. He wants to own a team one day. He wants to be surrounded by billionaires. He wants to go to a different market. Yeah, I I think there's no question he will not return if Pete Carroll and, in my opinion, some outdated schemes. uh, He'll leave if that isn't changed. Uh, Finally, Green Bay gets a bye. Who should they be worried about as a potential first-round playoff opponent or a first opponent for them? Who would worry you? Who do you think deep down they're a little skittish about? Love the question. I think it's San Francisco, and it's weird to say. I mean, this is a team that 
God, I was banging the drum for Trey Lance. It's like, man, if you're going to give away all these firsts for somebody, just just play and move on. But then you watch a game like that tonight, and I Jimmy Garoppolo threw two picks, but man, threw a thumb injury. He made some big throws. He he he, he does just enough. He's got playmakers all over the place. Debo Samuel is unlike anything in the NFL with with what he can do. Elijah Mitchell as a rookie back, maybe one of the more underrated players in the league. George Kittle, the best tight end. They're, they're going to get Trent Williams back. The defense is loaded and made a ton of plays. Um, they, they're not going to be afraid. I mean, they're not going to be afraid to go to Lambeau Field and grime it up and force a couple turnovers and, and run the ball, like you said, to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. Um, they, they they really should have beat Green Bay earlier in the season. They yep. gave that one away. That scared me if I was Green Bay that they snuck in. Yeah, I, I agree. And I also think you could put an occasional package in with Trey Lance, which you haven't done a ton of in the regular season. Yeah. But, I mean, you're playing with house money. Green Bay struggles against the run. You put in a red zone player to a couple of sets, a series with Trey Lance, catch the Packers off guard. The Packers, again, are going to sit out for two weeks. They'll be a little rustier. I think that's a yeah. fascinating matchup. When you face these teams, especially if San Francisco goes into the playoffs, they just beat the Rams. They win a first-round playoff series. They are a mile high playing yeah. with house money. Those are frightening teams. 